Hi, hello again and welcome on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. Uh, this is another portion of tutorial or educational material that this week I am preparing for my students at the Fritsch University in Kraków, Poland. Uh, this time I am coming up with a partial tutorial addressed to the first year undergraduate students in the curriculum of finance. So we are talking about finance and we are talking about your graduation projects, uh, which consist, as you pro pro probably remember, I am addressing now all my students at the Fritsch University, which consists in, uh, in designing a financial instrument. Uh, and uh, as once again, I hope you remember, uh, you can design one of the following financial instruments for the graduation. You can design an equity-based security. It could be a debt-based security. It could be a regular currency, like a bank-based currency. It can be a cryptocurrency. And finally, it can be an insurance contract. In this update, I am focusing on the first three. So on equity-based securities, on debt-based securities and on bank-based currencies. Now, the most likely cases, I'm, I generally like to, like to sort of match uh, the projects my students prepare with real life. So for equity-based securities and debt-based securities, the most realistic way of matching your project with a real-life situation is the following. You choose a company, preferably a company listed in some public stock market, because those companies have specific, specifically addressed uh, investors' relations sites where you can find their financial reports. So you pick up such a company, uh, you go to their investors relations site and you pick their latest financial uh, their latest financial report you look at their balance sheet in the balance sheet on the active side you have a certain amount of capital in assets financed on the passive side by a certain amount of equity and debt mm? these are the the elementary things now imagine a scenario when this specific company wants to increase their total capital base, so the aggregate value of their assets, for example, by 10%. It gives like an X amount of dollars or euros or whatever currency they denominate their financials in. And that amount of capital has to be, uh, has to be attracted to, to, to the business, has to be uh, incorporated into the business via those two basic tools, equity or debt. So you can imagine that the company wants to acquire that, in, in that uh, accruing capital by a mix of equity-based securities and debt-based securities. Then go through uh, the documents perti uh, pertinent to the corporate governance of that company and see how it plays out with them. Do they rather prefer to issue new shares in equity or rather, uh, or do they rather uh, sell a lot of corporate bonds to acquire capital via debt? Look how they, how they, uh, how they have been doing things so far. And then imagine something like a follow-up on the same strategy. So you take a real company with, their, uh, with a real balance sheet and imagine that you want to stuff them up a little bit with new capital using those two tools, equity-based securities and debt-based securities. And uh, as for the currency, as for designing a new currency, the most likely, like real-life case, is the case of an international currency for business, for settling business accounts. Uh, most people today ignore that the currency that to today we have as Euro in the European Monetary Union had a grandfather whose name was EQ, and EQ was precisely a currency designed specifically for settling international business accounts. 
we, within the European Union. And the experience accumulated with the EQ gave rise to what we have today as the Euro. Uh, there is, uh, in some places in the world today, there is need for such international currencies for settling international business accounts, mostly in uh, transactions, in international transactions between developing economies. Because those developing economies, for example, most countries in the African continent have either closed monetary systems or they have extremely volatile currencies. I mean volatile in their exchange rate against like the big ones, the dollar, the euro, the British pound, the Swiss franc. And uh, they struggle, they struggle, those financial systems struggle and frequently Putting in place an international currency for settling business accounts between those developing countries can be like a good idea. A few of my students recently communicated to me that they want to study something like that for the African countries, precisely, and they named it the Afro, a nice name. Uh, so you can go down this road a little bit. Now, a reminder, as usually, as always, uh, below the video, in the first line, you have the title, okay? Below the title, you have the description box. In the box, you have a link, discoversocialsciences.com. That link takes you to m the website of my research blog, of my blog, Discover Social Sciences. On that blog, you will find a written update with the, the same title as this video, okay? And in this written update, you will find like the full development on those things that I have just outlined here. So I wish you a nice reading. I wish you a nice uh, afternoon this sunny Wednesday. And uh, uh, essentially until the next time. Bye.